the overall impression I had from the meeting with the mail on Sunday was that we were not offering them anything they could not handle themselves. Phone hacking was not practiced by the Mail on Sunday or the Daily Mail. You know that because I gave this inquiry my unequivocal, unequivocal assurances on that. services were used by other papers, including the Mail on Sunday. We were the barrier between the illegal act and the Mail, mail on Sunday. One of my tasks was transcribing voicemails that Glenn had hacked. I've since found out some of my transcripts were actually sold to the Mail on Sunday by Greg Miske. In 2005, my role was to generate new business. Once I'd taken the meeting, that was my role fulfilled. Any further negotiation that that was Glenn and who else, whoever, you know. I was just there to make the contact. I was the salesman, if you like. Well, I had a brochure of our services, uh, which were pre-printed for me, and uh, which I would pass to potential clients. It was just the general services we could perform. On, on surveillance, voicemail uh, interceptions, things like that. Then it would be backed up by a meeting. But I remember one meeting with a journalist at the Mail on Sunday. I arranged the meeting by telephone. I spoke to a lady and then what I believed to be a fairly senior journalist who passed me on to one of his colleagues, whom I physically met in Kensington. I met him outside the office, and then he took me just along the street to a brasserie stroke cafe, and we spoke for around 40 minutes, pitching our services to him. overall impression I had from the meeting with the Mail on Sunday was that we were not offering them anything they could not handle themselves. So.